Hi everyone, welcome to the visual guide for the Lost City of Amtapur. This is the third new dungeon made available by Patch 2.2 and ugh, I'm not even sure how to introduce this place. I, I get some really amazing mist vibes from this place and when that happens, I cannot talk. Let's just leave it at it's amazing and jump right in. My name is Mistech, and I'll be your dungeon guide. For the most part, the trash pulls are quite simple. Avoid AoEs and squash some bugs. You'll come across these mold colonies a few times throughout the instance. There will be tainted mold bombs that will explode when they take damage or if a player gets too close to them. Range can handle these. The tank should pick up the hex ties while the DPS focuses down the colony first. The colony will continue to spawn mobs until it's destroyed. Once it's down, the DPS can switch to the hex ties. You'll also come across these adorable treasure chests. This has got to be one of the most popular tropes in video games that require you to open chests. Obviously, one of them is real, and the other one is a disappointment. The first boss is the Decaying Gormand. He has similar abilities to the first boss in Wanderer's Palace, so be careful to avoid the AoE blasts. Healers should also be on the lookout to dispel any of the cooties spread by his sneezes and snorts. The group should also take care to avoid the tainted ground that he drops. Periodically, the goo will mark his prey and eventually swallow them. When this happens, his mouth becomes targetable and must be destroyed immediately. Once the mouth is down, the player will be released. Easy peasy. Repeat until the boss is down. The trash in this next section is similar to what you've dealt with so far with one exception. You'll come across these gadflies that douse sections of the road with poison. The poison will remain on the ground until all the mobs are killed. The second boss is really interesting. The main boss can be seen flying over the arena and initially cannot be targeted. The only thing you can target is the Wamora in the middle. The Wamora has a frontal cone called Poison Cloud that can be avoided. Getting hit by it will place a dispellable debuff. Right before the Wamora dies, it will cast Skill Flakes on anyone in front of it. This debuff will attract the boss down into the arena. The boss doesn't follow normal enmity rules, instead his primary target will be any player with the highest stack of scale flakes. The easiest way to deal with this is to make sure that the tank is the only person who gets hit by the first stack when the first Wamura dies, and then maintain the buff from there on out. The tank should keep an eye on their debuff and pull the next Wamura when it's time to refresh their stack. Depending on your group's damage output, I would suggest pulling the next Wamura at around 20 to 15 seconds left on your debuff. Each stack also increases the damage you take, so there is a slight DPS check in making sure you kill the boss before your tank cannot handle the damage anymore. The boss itself will place a poison AoE on the ground underneath him that will strut off small and gradually grow. The tank should kite the boss out of these circles as necessary. He also has the long column attack that players should dodge. Remember to keep the debuff on the tank and you'll have him down quick. This last section of the instance has got to be one of the coolest in the entire game. You'll come across these vials of phones that are linked to the mage stones. These mobs cannot be killed until the links to each crystal are destroyed. However, the rest of the trash does do quite a bit of damage, so we chose to destroy the random adds first before focusing down the crystals. We do these until we reach the final boss, Diablo. Uh, pff, I mean, Diabolos? This is by far the coolest freaking fight in this game. I love it. It is amazing but very complicated, so let's break it down. The first thing you'll notice as you engage are the doors around the platform with symbols above them. Each door will have a twin somewhere on the platform. Basically, this is a giant game of memory. It's easiest to assign two players to door duty. The first thing you should do is mark up one set of matching doors with waypoints. The symbols will disappear fairly quickly, so unless you have a photographic memory, you'll need something to help you remember which one is which. The two assigned players should hang out by their respective doors, but do not open them yet. You'll need them for when the boss casts his ultimate. The boss has a frontal cleave and a mid-range blast that looks scarier than it is, so be sure you're either in melee or max range. He will also target random players with grab -a balls If you see a massive target on your character, you should attempt to move away from others. You will eventually drop a grab -a ball that will pulse AoE blasts throughout the fight. Since your door masters will be running around, try not to drop these near any active doors in case they need access to them. Eventually, the boss will emote and begin to cast Ruinous Omen. This is where the doors come in. When a matching pair of doors is open, the entire group is transported through another dimension from one door to the next, negating the damage from Ruinous Omen. If you're sure of which doors you're opening, it's better to wait until about halfway through the cast time to open both doors. You don't want to pop out on the other side before he actually casts the blast. 
While you're traveling between the two doors, you'll be able to see the symbols above the doors again. The acid trip is a little hard to see through, but your door master should be on the lookout for matching symbols. Mark up the doors that match to be ready for the next ruinous omen. If you aren't too sure if the two doors you've picked actually do match up, I would suggest opening the doors a little earlier during the cast. Should you pick the wrong two doors, the doors will close and you'll have to start all over. Again, giant game of memory. If you fail to open any doors and Ruinous Blast does go off, note that it hits you for about 80% of your health, but your healer might die of a heart attack. These mechanics will repeat until the boss is down. And there you have it. Tell me that isn't the coolest boss fight ever. As always, thanks for watching. Up next, we'll look at Leviathan Hard Mode. Till next time.